Well, hello there, everyone, and welcome to another Animal Crossing speed build. I realized sort of recently that I haven't ever actually introduced myself in any of my videos. So hello, my name is Michaela. If you didn't know, now you know. Welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. It is lovely to have you. Also, let me know in the comments whether or not the way that you were pronouncing my name in your head was correct. I'm curious. I genuinely am curious. Today, we're going to be building what I anticipated would be a lakeside cabin, but I didn't end up having enough space for both a lake and the diagonal bridge of my dreams in the area that I'd picked out. So it ended up being more of a riverside cabin. The villager that's gonna be living here is Murphy, my favorite little cranky boy. He showed up at my campsite a while ago, actually, probably a few months ago, and I just thought he was literally the cutest thing in the whole world except for my other nine villagers <laughs> and fun fact uh the day that i'm recording this is actually murphy's birthday so i guess this new house situation is kind of like a birthday present for him i don't know how all the rest of my villagers feel about that because for my last video i spent roughly 10 or 11 hours building houses for six of my villagers and then in this video i spent six hours just on Murphy. So I don't want the rest of the villagers to feel like there's any favoritism going on, you know what I mean? This is the way that my mind works, just bear with me. The way that I'm rationalizing this is Murphy's kind of like a cranky old man, right? And I feel like he needs his space, you know? He needs his riverside cabin to get away from the world and just fish and vibe. And the neighborhood that I built was just full of girls and he's not gonna wanna vibe with a neighborhood full of girls. You know what I mean? Anyway, enough about the imaginary neighborhood politics that I just straight up invented. Let's talk a little bit about diagonal bridges, if you don't mind, because diagonal bridges are the bane of my life, and I'm sure that they are the bane of many people's lives in Animal Crossing. I had to cut out a lot of footage of myself building this diagonal bridge and kind of like setting up the way that the path leads into it, but I wanted to leave in some footage because I wanted to maybe validate some of of you that also struggle with diagonal bridges because I feel like every time I see a diagonal bridge in somebody's Instagram or Pinterest or whatever, I'm like, oh my gosh, it looks beautiful. So I really wanted to have a diagonal bridge in this Daisy, get out of my way, please. Daisy. Okay, thank you, love you. I wanted to have a diagonal bridge in this area of my island. It was very important to me aesthetically, but I struggled with it so much and I'm really not sure why. Like I would place it down and get it lined up and then go to the other side of the bridge and try and line it up again and it wouldn't work. <laughs> and so I like placed it and moved it and placed it and moved it like several times, like for an hour probably. So I just wanted to say if any of you are struggling with placing a diagonal bridge, you're not alone. They're just finicky. I feel like a lot of things in this game are just finicky because Animal Crossing kind of works on a grid system, but they don't want to tell you where that grid is exactly. So you just have to guess. I feel like this game would be a lot easier if there was like an indicator system where you could say like, okay, this is like exactly where I'm placing my terraforming tool. Like this square is where I want my terraforming tool to go. I just feel like that would save us all so much heartache and stress. Anyway, I think that's probably enough complaining about the game mechanics. Now we can talk about the actual build. So I built up a little bit of a cliff behind where I'm going to be putting Murphy's house and I kind of connected it to the neighborhood that's directly to the right of it. And I did end up getting a little bit sidetracked while I was filming this video and I put Henry's house up there and kind of extended the existing neighborhood over to the left a bit so that Henry's house could be directly behind Murphy's house. I just got a little bit distracted when I realized that Murphy and Henry's houses were very similar colors. So in my infinite 30 second attention span wisdom, I thought what better time to move Henry's house than right in the middle of a video I'm making building a house for someone else. Apparently, I couldn't think of a better time because I did it right then. So surprise, this video is two house builds for the price of one. I didn't keep in much of the decorating of Henry's house because it basically looks the same as the houses that are in my neighborhood build video. And the main focus is on Murphy because it's his birthday. 
Something else that was really important to me while I was working on rebuilding my island, besides the diagonal bridge, of course, was the overall navigability. I wanted it to be very clear to anyone who came to visit my island how to get from one place to another. I visited a lot of islands that are gorgeous, but really hard to navigate, like visually stunning, functionally a little bit stressful. And if that's like the way that you want to play, absolutely go for it. But for me, when I'm like playing on my own island, I want to be able to kind of know where I'm going and like easily get to all of my villagers' houses whenever I want to get to them. So this is the way that Murphy and Henry's houses turned out. Uh, Murphy's in front, Henry's just a little bit to the side. I'm still not entirely sure why I felt the need to move Henry's house in the middle of a video about Murphy's house, but that's just the way I roll, baby girl. So now we get to the fun part, which is the decorating and also messing around with the river and <laughs> the paths a little bit more. I do like to try and finish terraforming before I place down the bridges and the houses and like all the big ticket items, I guess. But inevitably, once I get the buildings and the bridges situated, I end up changing my mind a little bit because, you know, it's hard to see what the house looks like before it's actually there. You know what I mean? So once I got the house in place, I was able to see, okay, how much cliff do I need? Where should I put a waterfall? Where should I put this and that? And how am I going to connect the river from my existing neighborhood to my new diagonal bridge that I couldn't live without? Things like that. For some reason, this corner was really annoying to decorate. I'm not sure why. I guess it was just because it was really close to the river but I kept having to like pick things up because I couldn't rotate them and I couldn't move them into place. And I had to like build into the river <laughs> and then put something down and then like delete the terraforming and then build it out again, put something down. It was just a nightmare. But I wanted Murphy to have his little fishing spot because he does tend to just like walk around my island and fish all the time. So that was kind of like the main inspiration behind this whole cabin was like those fishing tournament items on a dock by a river. So I had to make it work. One of my favorite parts about this area of my island is the circular paths. I was looking for a way to do kind of like a more natural looking path without using the path. If you've downloaded any custom paths for, I almost said the Sims, <laughs> if you've downloaded any custom paths for Animal Crossing, you probably know of the path. It's basically a natural looking dirt path, I guess. And I think it's supposed to kind of replicate the natural looking paths that were in some of the older games. I really like the way that it looks. It just doesn't show up on the map because it's custom. So the game doesn't recognize it as like something that's on the ground. And I use my map a lot to get around my island and other people's islands. So I wanted there to be something that would show up on the map that would show people where you're supposed to go. And it's really hard to make natural looking diagonal paths in this game with the paths that are like that come with the game. So I understand that that's why a lot of people use like paths like the path and things that you can download. But that just wasn't quite going to work for me because I rely so heavily on the map to get around. So my solution for that was to make these circular paths and I think they look really, really cute and they serve my purpose perfectly. Also, this is a little bit random, but I think this is the first time I've ever put music outside. <laughs> like I see videos of people's villagers singing outside or people put like a, a little music box outside of Abel Sisters and it's so cute and I'm like, oh wow, I should do that. And then I don't. <laughs> so for this build, I put some music outside and it was really nice. I really liked it. It really added to the vibes. I would 100% recommend putting some music outside if you're thinking about it. So I'm kind of running out of things to talk about at this point. It's also like 3.30 in the morning and I'm getting kind of tired. I don't know why I stayed up until 3.30 doing this voiceover. Nobody's making me do this. I don't have the answers for you. But what I will say is I think it's about time we do some shameless self-promotion. If you've gotten this far in the video, you might as well subscribe. You know what I mean? 
I usually do Sims content. That's kind of what I started my channel with. So if you're into the 100 baby challenge or rocks to riches or legacy challenges, you can definitely check out my other videos. But recently I've started doing Animal Crossing and people seem to really like it. So I'm gonna keep doing this for a little while. So if you like this video, give it a like and let me know in the comments what you thought. And if you didn't like it, I don't know why you're still watching. If you'd like to see more content from me, you can check out my Instagram that I made for my island. It's just at bean.land on Instagram. You can also check me out on Twitch. I've started live streaming on Twitch whenever I feel like it. I really don't have a schedule at this point, but at some point I would like to kind of nail down some days and times that I'm live. But definitely give me a follow over on Twitch if you're interested in hanging out with me live. I play a lot of Animal Crossing, Stardew Valley, a lot of Mario Kart. It's a good time. You can find me at twitch.tv slash Michaela Bell. And obviously I'll have all of my links in the description as well. I really like how this little fake campsite turned out. I'm absolutely obsessed with this kid's tent item. I think is just the cutest thing in the world. The house that's on the beach right now is Goose's house. I do plan on moving it. I just didn't move it for this video because I already moved Henry's house and I wasn't planning on doing that. So at some point Goose's house will move. I was thinking maybe to put the campsite there so that I could have like the little kids tent campsite and then the real campsite. And also the dock is directly to the left of it so I could probably do something cute with that. But just not sure what yet. That's for another video. So for some reason, right before this, I stopped recording while I was picking out all of my custom paths, and then I didn't continue recording when I started placing the custom paths. So now it's like two hours later and all of my custom paths are down. Unfortunately, you don't get to see any of it because I just fully forgot to record it. What can I say? I'm a professional. Anyway, if you're interested to see what the custom paths were, I will link them down below in the description for you. I just basically added some little sparkles to the circular path to give them a little bit of a dimension. If you saw my fall themed builds, I had all of these like fall leaves scattered around and it just like added really nice detail to the area. So I was going to try and replicate that a little bit, but with something a little bit more wintry. And I also added in some little weeds here and there. I just thought it kind of gave a little bit of a homey, overgrown, cozy look. And I've seen a lot of people use the weeds in, um, in their builds, but I've just never done it because uh, the other two builds that I've done are more paved over, like they've got the kind of wood paving. So it didn't really make sense to just have weeds in the middle of the street. But for this area, I felt like it really tied the whole thing together. So the build is finally complete. We are about to embark on our final walkthrough. As you can tell, I have time traveled a little bit, so it is now January. Just wanted to give my fruit trees time to grow. I wanted the weeds to spread out a little bit. And I wanted the new flowers. Like, I felt like the holly bushes from Christmas wouldn't really fit with the vibe of this build. And the camellias are just like so gorgeous. I think they just like look beautiful and perfect. And speaking of beautiful and perfect, I would like to give a big shout out to Mallow ACNH for the lovely snow dust lightroom preset that I used in my thumbnail. So go show them some love on Instagram. You can also check out my Instagram if you'd like at bean.land. All of the links, of course, will be in the description. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know in the comments if you liked it. I hope that you're having a good holiday and that you're looking forward to the new year. I definitely am. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.